this is Stacia, and I wanted to share a game that I played on chess.com. Um, my opponent was rated about 1430, and I was rated about 1480. Yeah, unfortunately, my rating has slipped quite a bit. Um, but I was looking to, you know, start my rebound uh, this game. So let's have a look. My opponent opened with e4. And now I didn't play d5, <laughs> which Team Scandi. Um, instead, I went with e5. And this is something that I have been playing since June. And I'm sure is contributing to my rating drop since I have no idea what I'm doing in these openings yet. <laughs> but I won't find out if I don't play it. Okay, my opponent went knight f3, and now I played knight f6. And this is called the pet rock defense. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's the Petrov defense, also called the Russian defense. Okay, and so my pawn is hanging. I'm saying go ahead and take it if you like. My opponent said, no, thank you. And I played bishop to b4. And now we're in an opening um, called the three knights game. So the main move here is knight takes e5, um, grabbing the pawn, and then Al Castle. Um, another line is bishop to c4. So that is an option. Um, but my opponent picked the third most common move, which is d3. A little bit passive. A little bit passive. And I'm pretty sure, and I was pretty sure during the game that I can play d5 against this. Um, the problem is when I calculated it, I thought, huh. You know, I realize this pawn is hanging. So if d5 takes, takes, can white grab here? You know, am I going to hang my pawn? And the answer is no, because when I play knight d5, I'm attacking this knight, which is pinned. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate. So d5 takes, takes. There is no knight takes e5, because here we can play knight takes knight. Now white's already lost. Takes, check, forking, and forking the knight. And after bishop to d2, it's even better than taking the rook. It's just taking the free piece with a well-placed bishop in the center. And better development for that, uh, for that reason. So this is one for black. So I need not fear leave, leaving that pawn hanging like that. But I went with the second best move, knight to c6, just defending it first. My opponent played um, bishop to d2, so that does break the pin now. And um, here, I think I just castle. Yeah. Yeah, interestingly enough, d5 is a move here as well. So I could still go for d5. Here, and I'm guessing he would take. And I could play this way. Now here he can take my knight. Now my bishop's hanging. Well, I guess not totally. But this is still the best move to take. <coughs> and after here, I can take the knight. Bishop e2, castles. I think black's maybe slightly better here, certainly equal. We have more center control than white does. They had to give up their center pawn um, to take my d pawn. So they're a little more passive in terms of pawn structure. I have a centralized queen. I always look to see if there's knight c3, this isn't so good, but there's no knight c3. Um, I'm a little bit ahead of development, potentially. Uh, maybe not. But yeah, I think um, black might be on the better side of quality here, maybe slightly better. So pretty interesting. But I chose to castle. And this is fine. And the computer says this position's equal. That's kind of how, how I felt during the game. All right, so bishop e2. And I'm thinking at this point, like, I'm not really familiar with how to play these kinds of positions yet because, like I said, I just picked up this opening. 
Um, so I thought I'd play like kind of safe and then maybe, you know, eventually go for d5. So I played d6 this time. Again, d5 is better for similar reasons as last time. My opponent castled. Yeah, and I had to kind of look at this. Like, is this a problem? Like a3, this kind of thing. And I thought, you know, I might lose my two bishops, but I thought this is okay. So I developed my bishop, and he did go for this. So I brought my bishop to b6. I actually like my bishop here, so, you know, I think he needs to do this now. And um, he didn't. He played bishop to g5. Notice the computer does say knight a4 is superior. Just picking up the bishop here. Um, this move, though, I think is a little challenging. Um, the reason the computer doesn't like it is interesting. For me, um, I saw that this is pinned, and it's really not easy to get out of the pin. I don't have a move like bishop e7, you know, this bishop's over here. And if the knight was on d7, it wouldn't concern me so much. I could just move my queen away and my knight's still defended, but now my queen needs to defend so I don't wreck my um, my little castle over here. <laughs> now the reason the computer thinks this isn't so good is because um, it recommends h6, which I think I played, and after bishop h4, which wasn't played in the game, this move, computer will go ahead and play g5. Um, but I have two concerns. You know, the fact that I'm weakening my king forever, my king side, and also this. Um, this sacrifice. Now the pin feels almost eternal. <laughs> and... Um, you know, whites down a piece for two pawns, but I can't easily defend my king side. I guess maybe I have this type of maneuver. And with the knight here, maybe I'm okay. But yeah, kind of interesting. And something I want to learn more about, lines like that. Um, but instead, in the game, I played h6. Um, the bishop came back to e3. Now there's tension between the bishops. Um, but I don't think I should take because this would strengthen his center control and open his rook up. So I didn't do that. I played rook e8. And my intention here was to x-ray defend my e-pawn so that when I play d5, um, my knight and my rook are defending it. Notice that my knight could get kicked away. And he went queen d2. And this looks fairly normal, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to try to get my pawn break. He's going to try to get his pawn break. And, you know, it's going to be just one of those slow games. And then, boom, I played d5, my pawn break. <laughs> and here's what I meant. Boom. Bishop takes h6. So sacrificing a piece and um this did shake me up only because i didn't calculate this i usually look at these types of moves and before i play something like d5 i would calculate this and make sure that it's okay but um yeah i didn't do that here so i was a little nervous but you know looking at it on the surface i thought it's probably not a good sacrifice now, I probably have to take this bishop because if I don't, um, he can play bishop takes g7 next and completely clear out my king side for the bishop. So I did take, and the queen came in. And, you know, makes you a little nervous when your king can't move <laughs> and you have a visitor like this. Um, but I was thinking, I have some defensive resources here. I would love to play bishop f8. Can't do that, though. Bishop's over here. Um, but I found a couple interesting options. Knight to h7, which would open up my queen, and also knight to g4. 
I should also mention that, you know, it's pretty clear that white wants to play knight g5. So that would be next uh, threatening, you know, potentially checkmate here. I guess I have king f8 even then, now that I look at that. So yeah, I'm understanding the computer's valuation of this more because I think knight g5 is not even a true threat. If queen h7 check, king f8, my bishop is defending the square. So there's no queen takes g7 or f7 checkmate like there sometimes is. So, okay. But I played a little more cautious. The computer just wants to say, wants to play like knight d4. And I, in hindsight, I really like this move. Um, but let's look at uh, the interesting move, knight g4. Okay, so in the game I went with knight h7. So my idea was if knight g5, I can just take it like this. Um, and in a perfect world, I'd love to play like knight e7 to knight g6. Then I've got probably too many defenders to deal with. Um, but this move, knight to g4, looks really interesting. So this also stops knight g5 because I'm attacking the queen. So it gains a tempo. And I thought the queen has to go to h5. Can't really go here. That would trade queens. Shouldn't go here. That would probably be very bad with the bishop here. So it would be this square. And now I could either just jump back. That does allow a check. Maybe king f8 then. Um, but I also thought I could play... Um, Maybe just queen f6 here. Yeah, I'm just checking. The thing is, um, I think my knight might get attacked. So like if queen f6, is knight h4 a thing? Computer likes e takes d5. Yeah, this move. Kind of annoying. And now it's saying queen g7. Why would I play queen g7? Oh. So if I take here, yeah, actually this fork is working now. So this fork just wins. Wow. Okay. So, kind of interesting, after this move, the computer's choice is queen h5 as well. But then it says I need to continue with um, d takes e4. So yeah, clearly stopping that fork. So pretty interesting. And if the knight comes in, uh, hitting g5 again, now there's only one move for black. And if you'd like to pause your video, it's a pretty interesting defensive move. Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> okay, and if you came up with king g7, then give yourself a pat on the back. This move looks crazy to me at first glance. Like, hey, I'm going to walk towards your queen <laughs> and towards your attackers. Um, but I think there's a lot of good defensive ideas. Um, so, like, one reason to play king g7 is knight h6 becomes possible. Another reason... Is to pl is that um, rook h8 becomes possible, and followed by queen g8, and you know, am I going to get my pieces in? So it's actually a very good defensive idea that I want to remember this king g7. So it's kind of clearance. It's clearance, clearance, because you're clearing out your back row for defense. Okay, now let's go back to the game because. I played knight h7. So this also stops knight g5. And my opponent played e takes d5, the best move. Okay. Now in this case, I didn't move my queen away. So I am defending the square still. So I can take. 
in the game, I thought I needed my bishop defending this diagonal at first. So I really looked hard at takes, 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 followed by, um, let's see. Thought there was some kind of check at some point. Oh yeah, the queen moved away. So knight g5 could be played. And if I take queen takes check, king f8. I wasn't entirely sure about this at first, but um, I did deter determine that I thought this is okay, so I took the pawn. It's probably spent like three minutes on that, three or four minutes. Too long. <laughs> so he took. I took. But now no knight, knight g5. He played a different move. He played... Um... Oh, and in fact, I don't even think he took the bishop. Yeah, he played knight here. I think that's just a clear mistake. Clear mistake. Um... You probably should have taken my bishop. Yeah, computer agrees. So let's look at the line that I calculated. Knight takes d5. Queen takes. I thought knight g5 here might be good. Computer agrees. And after, can I take it? Yeah, knight takes g5, check. So computer did follow the line I calculated. And it says after king f8, white actually does have a little bit of an initiative after c4. Hmm. I think the point is, you know, white is going to have some threats here. I can go queen d8. What about queen d... Not queen here. Oh, man. This is a threat, isn't it? So maybe that's that's the point. So queen d8, can he go? He can't go here right away because I'm hitting the queen. Training queens is probably a mistake. But on the other hand, like okay, let's say takes here. I'm going to lose this bishop. Knight d4 takes. And then what? Maybe here? Oh, well here they're losing the bishop. So hang on a second. Oh, so that's his tempo moves. Does this save the day? I mean, this still looks trapped though. Rook a2 defending. Yeah, it still doesn't look right to me. I guess I can take and take. But now what? Yeah, I'm going to have to give this up. And this would be the resulting position. Now, interestingly enough, even after losing your bishop like that, remember that white sacked a piece. So it's equal material. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is equal. So if... If white wants to maintain initiative, they shouldn't do this. Okay. So instead, though, it was 94 in the game. And I think, you know, I thought taking it was pretty um, straightforward. But um, the computer actually likes rookie six better. So tempo on the queen first. The queen would have to move. Go to like h5. And then we could play rook g6. Hmm, pretty interesting. I took here first though. I think that's totally fine. And he took back, right? Yes, he did. And now rook e6. Queen went to h3, and now I played queen f6. So 
I was wondering if there's a better move than queen f6. It doesn't look like the best move. Um, but really, I just wanted to get my rook in the game. Like, I, I don't mind. If I have to play king h8 and r then rook g8, I thought that would be cool. So um, I did put my queen here. Computer says queen f8 is better. Rook g6 is better. Even knight g5, tempo move. Oh, I actually like knight g5 a lot. Look at that. It's a fork, which means it's going to force a trade, most likely. I mean, queen g4 would pin it, but then we have rook g6. Yeah. Okay. So in the game, queen to f6. And now he played bishop c4. No problem. I just moved my rook. Rook to d6. And now he checked me. And I probably could even play like queen g6. Probably totally fine. But I play king h8 because I want to bring my, my last piece into the game. Thought this might be useful. Not sure what that move was. King g8. He has to move his queen. Yeah, and here I missed a win. When I saw he wanted to trade queens, I got excited and I took immediately. But look at this. I just put my rook on g8 for this very reason. This would definitely win immediately. Foul by resigns. Instead, I took the queen. But here, um, you know, I'm a piece up. So, knight here. And I think I can pretty much go through the rest of this pretty quickly. You know, just king. He's probably worried about my rook being lined up. I took the bishop because it wins a pawn. The knight came in. I think he wants to get this in. I don't blame him. Maybe that. Um, but I played pawn up, so attacking the knight. Notice this is defended by my knight, luckily. He went here, and now rook to d2. And I saw that I have a little threat. You know, if if I take the knight, pawn takes, it does open the rook on my pawn, but it also opens my rook on his pawn. <laughs> so I went ahead and allowed this. Yeah, and took here. So now I'm threatening uh, mate in two. So he took here. This actually does open the square for the king, so that does stop uh, mate in two. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize my screen got messed up. Check, king over. Yeah, and I like this move. So I was actually calculating um, rook check, king over, and rook h1. It's kind of a lazy way to play. Um, but I thought here, I have a knight and he doesn't, so I should be winning. But even better, I thought, was this um, this move. So knight to e5. So I'm attacking his rook, but on top of that, I'm threatening check. And once I get check, it'll be king over and checkmate. The knight will guard both these squares. So here my opponent resigned, and um, for good reason, I think. Computer gives rook d1 as the best move. Yeah, that's kind of a sad thing, hoping I'll take, I guess. <laughs> but knight f3 check. Probably has to take now. But this is going to be mate soon. Um, yeah, he probably has to take here. And um, now I would just bring my king up and it's over. So, yeah, pretty fun game. Um, I realized, though, that I didn't play well, really. Um, my opponent just decided to sacrifice, and I managed not to blunder and fall under a big attack, but was a pretty unimpressive attack, so I don't think it was too difficult to defend. Let's have a quick look at this. So one thing that I learned is that I will go d5 here. You can leave this pawn hanging because of the tricks on c3, so that is something I will keep in mind in the future. 
Again, I can go d5 here with a slightly better game. Here, I do have to watch out for losing my bishop. I was going to allow it this game. Yeah, and this. These ideas with h6 and g5. I want to learn more about that. I'll probably do a study on that at some point. Because that is the correct way to play it. Yeah, and here, I'm kind of disappointed I didn't see this sacrifice right away. I'm sure I would have been like, oh, I think it's fine and played my next move anyway, but um, I should at least be calculating this. You know, they say calculate all checks, captures, and tempo moves. Well, guess what? <laughs> That's a capture. <laughs> okay, so I went d5 and here. Too speculative. Not going to work out. I took... Knight h7, the third best move, or maybe worse. Better was actually knight d4. I didn't go over that move, but that's the best way to defend. Um, even bishop d4 is okay. That's just the computer saying, I don't believe your attack. I'm going to attack your knight instead. And um, yeah, knight g4 with that king g7 idea. Very interesting. But I played this, and this was good enough. I didn't have to defend perfect here. Yeah, in fact, I should probably take this pawn. And I did calculate this, but yeah, knight e4, not too hard to deal with. And after this, I felt pretty content. I liked my rook g8 plan. It's pretty simple, just very straightforward. Yeah, okay, I shouldn't miss stuff like this. That would have won a lot faster. But I'm up a piece, <laughs> so hard to complain. Yeah, and I, I liked um, my finish with check and knight e5. That pretty much was the nail in the coffin. So hope you enjoyed this game. Um, hope you learned something with me. I will be back with more videos, so stay tuned. Thank you. Bye.